number 243 from the Masters of Cinema collection and the third Paul Laney movie to be released recently by them uh, is a silent movie from 1929 hard to really type down what year it is exactly I'm getting conflicting information from various sites wherever I look and I was really curious about this one I think the run time's fantastic 78 minutes it's really quick it's the first time I've encountered a murder mystery in the form of a silent movie and it just has all these kind of elements that I really love it feels almost as if it's tailored for me as the movie opens, we are shown a, a theatre. It's in the middle of a production. There has been a travesty and someone, the lead actor, has died. And we are, are thrown into all the characters involved within the play, the, the, the policemen that are in, investigating it, the behind the scenes of people being talked to uh, about their relationship with the deceased. And then the body vanishes. We jump a period of time to a, a new producer has come in uh, and he is bringing back the old cast to do the play that was cut short and he's bringing everybody back but there seems to be notes and things being left about alluding to the ghost of the dead actor not wanting this play to take forth. So you have this kind of strange setup of a murder mystery you have this idea that not everybody is entirely who they seem to be you have some people who have nefarious plans some people who have hidden relationships some people who are trying to figure out what exactly happened and you get this idea of a theatricality and amongst this set in the stage you have all these people with superstitions who don't want to be there who are kind of forced because of monetary uh, value they kind of need to be there and how they interact with each other and the kind of spooky goings that are happening throughout the movie but it has some really fun moments as well it has moments of levity where it becomes a little bit almost close to slapstickish in the way that people are blocked and staged throughout the scene how they come in and exit a scene how they interact some of the um, electricians that are in the movie are a little bit broad in their comedic sensibilities but it fits in with this movie perfectly it has that kind of haunted house feeling about it of people bumbling around there are secret passageways there are you're waiting for the scooby-doo reveal of who the murderer is at the end and I just loved the actual tale. The tale itself was amazing. And to find out that it's been remade several times isn't much of a surprise. And it's something that I'm going to go and check out other iterations of it. Because I really did love the story. And I'd like to see what other people do with it. Now, the director here, Paul Lenny, does some wonderful camera work within this one really um, subtle in moments and just fantastical in other moments considering uh, other silent movies that I've seen there's a scene at the start where the whole theatre is in chaos after the death of the lead actor and the camera just dollies through all the various patrons before focusing on a certain subject there's a moment later on where uh, an old woman is up something tall and she falls down in the fall is is given to us by the movement of the camera. It's up high, it comes down quickly and then focuses on the cast coming to help the old lady. It's, it's really nice directorial touches like this that I don't think I've really experienced as much in other silent film. And I found it to be fascinating to see how the camera would move um, around the scene to create a sense of suspense and tension and mystery all the way around it. It was really well done and it felt uh, really film centric in the way it was done. You know, it didn't feel as if it was just locked off and filmed. It felt as if it was really created um, and had certain kind of moments I really appreciated. The score on this one is wonderful. One of the better silent scores I've heard that really adds that kind of fun and mystery aspect together. Like I said, it feels a little bit like a Scooby Doo. Um, episode almost in the way the story is constructed but the music really has moments of atmosphere and, and builds it greatly there is tension in certain scenes suspense 
horror and the score plays into it wonderfully but there's also a sense of whimsy behind it as well as we follow some of the characters bumbling along or having their little tete-a-tetes where they're releasing information for us to uh, devour and try to piece together throughout the movie. I, I love this one. This was probably my favourite Paul Lenny movie that's came out from The Man Who Laughs to Waxworks. The Last Warning was something that felt tailored to me, something that I really enjoyed. Uh, and, and although the disc is rather sparse on this one, it is a 4K restoration and there are a little bit of bumps along the way. It's not a perfect transfer. Looks great for the most part, but there are some scratches, some jumps in the film, but that kind of adds to it, I, I feel. It doesn't detract from it. It's not perfect uh, quality, but it's far from unwatchable. And then there is a video essay, uh, Paul Lenny in The Last Warning, which kind of goes about um, the construction of the film, the various iterations after it, the stars and how their movies before it played into this one. And it's a really nice visual essay. I'm super happy with this. This is well up there with one of my favourite silent movies I've seen. Um, I would happily watch it again right now. Terrific movie. I'd love to know your thoughts in the last warning. Let me know in the comment box below. And I'll see you next time on Man V Film.